brother's ex friend of mine. And just a minute, boys, I got the feedbox noise. It says the great grandfather. Hello racing fans and welcome to another edition of Handicapper's Corner brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads and along with Drew Forster we're going to go through the Saturday, June 22nd races at Hastings Racecourse. We'd have seven lined up. Drew, uh, should be a good day. Yeah, should be a good day. It's not supposed to be the best weekend here, but the one day that's calling for a little bit of sunshine would be Saturday. Little, got a little hope. Exactly. There's a ray of sunshine on Saturday. Hopefully the weatherman will, will live up to his prediction and we'll try and live up to our predi predictions as well. Let's start things off in race number one, Drew, with uh, some maiden $5,000 claimers uh, going six and a half furlongs. I've landed on the five horse. I'm famous. I liked him last time. Yes, you, know, you did. Yeah. Bet down to three to one. Good and call uh, last time. Couldn't beat Black Whiskey, who got away pretty pretty easy on the head end. This horse, I thought, ran well off the big layoff. And uh, I think off of that race has to be pretty dangerous in this spot. And to go to a bit of an outsider with the two Kai's command in for a second. I liked this horse last time, but this horse uh, got to get sloughed away from the gate. And, was chasing some fast fractions, really never got in the running. That was for 10 grand. This horse continues to descend the claiming ladder. I think down here for 5,000, this horse is going to be a lot more dangerous. And I put the three horse Castrati in for third. Uh, racing in between horses much of the trip, pretty uncomfortable trip. And I like the way the horse kept battling on mm -hmm. and uh, was you know sitting in fourth, turning for home. Ended up tiring and run fifth, but still, I, I thought there was something there. And as a horse that's learning and moving forward, so I've got put this horse in for third. Uh, I went five, two, and three. I agree on the five. Uh, <clears throat> I, I got the five on top as well. Was well meant last time. You, as you mentioned, you like him last time. Was yeah. well meant. Only got beat by three links to Black Whiskey. Uh, the second spot, I put Devil's Cause or the Monica Russell Barn. A horse that's had some brutal trips. It seems to always be getting hung out wide. He gets a better post today. He's had the 10 hole, two starts yeah, no, in a row. Lucky. Now he get, gets down to the inside of the four hole. I think he could be a little more dangerous with a better trip. And third spot, I went to uh, Mr. Wow. Mansky, the seven horse out of the Rob Van Overshot Barn. Uh, yeah, he's got some decent work. Works that definitely fit for this kind of category. Th these horses aren't going to be running very fast. And uh, if he can live up to any one of those works, I think he'll be in the mix. So uh, a horse you probably get a little bit of a price on, too. I got five, four, and seven in the first. On to the second. Three-year-olds and up non-winners of the year going a mile and a sixteenth. And I've gone to the sixth raising memo. Uh, ran a good... Uh, he, every race he's ran this year has been good. He's got three seconds, and, a, and he finally broke through and won the $4,000 non-winners of the year. Jumped up to the five, got beat by Sufi Dancer, who, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we both liked in the 7,500 on Friday night. Uh, so I like raising Memo in here. In the second spot, I got finally cruising. Uh, a horse who finally got to go long last time uh, was in that same Sufi Dancer raising Memo race. He ran third, so he's kind of a logical pick to be in the mix as well. And in the third spot, I put Ice Rules, another one who's had two bang-up races in a row, getting beat by Arkill and uh, Nota Sal. Uh, one who definitely likes to uh, be in the mix, yeah. hit the board. I got six, seven, and two in the second. Yeah, I saw the race a little different. I, I thought the, the outside two horses really benefited from a crazy pace. And, yeah. uh, I just don't think the pace is going to be anywhere near as brutal as it was last time. Country Kid was four wide through the entire trip. And this horse got beat like a length and a half. A couple lengths were sacked and it ended up fifth. That was a big race. This horse ran the best. Anyone coming out of the Sufi Dancer race, I thought, of anyone, this was the best one. Mm -hmm. Country kid gets Marlo Dunn, who won on this uh, horse uh, three start or four starts back, and I, I just think this horse is going to be pretty light. This horse is going to get the lead. I don't think the little brown guy is going to go out there again. He can't keep doing the suicide missions on the head end. And uh, country kid gets the lead. This horse should be gone. I put the two horse ice rules uh, in for second. Uh, good runner up effort to notice Sal. Uh, good heat. It's, you know, distance limitations. I'm not too sure how far this horse wants to go, but if he can route, the fractions are proper and, you know, conservative, then this horse should be right in the mix. And I put Little Brown Guy in for third. Hopefully he gets rated in behind the speed this time and uh, that he'll have a lot more left of the lane. He had to go head-to-head -head with Sufi Dancer last time, and it took its toll. This horse was yeah. done at the eighth pole and uh, ended up sixth and only beat one horse. But he had to do all the fighting with the tough horse in the race, and yeah. he just... You know, got exhausted. So uh, I give him another shot with a better rating job. I went four, two, and three. On to the third race. Nong wears a three lifetime uh, for uh, Colts and Geldings going six and a half furlongs. And I ended up on the fourth. Where's Henry? I'm not too sure what to do with him. I mean, there's a couple horses today where there's, uh, these horses taking these crazy drops. Yeah. And, uh, is this he, horse he, gonna he took this drop already and, and, was, and was scratched on post grade by Frank Flynn. Yeah. So yeah, Robert Skelly will ride uh, Where's Henry? And uh, this horse... You know, obviously, if he runs anywhere near 
close to his last race. He wins this race by about eight lengths. But yeah. uh, must be leery of the fact that this horse is not. This is in in for four. Actually, he's even have, in for thirty five hundred. Have a look at him in the paddock. Is on sale. Say, yes. And he's on sale. Yeah. Have a look at him. It's, he's a speedball that obviously. Uh, anytime you see these big drops, it's probably a horse that might need to be turned out pretty soon. So maybe he's only got a couple races left in him, but he. If you're going to play him, you hope he's got one more. Uh, you know, he does well. But the two-horse three-point play in for second, uh, another one with big question marks yeah. surrounding his soundness, off almost a whole year. Uh, one for 25000 and his only start in Vancouver as a three-year-old. And uh, it's taken him a long time to get back to the races, yeah. and his work tab's good, but he shows up for four grand. Uh, you know, a little alarming here, but I got him in for second, and I put Minstrel's time. We ran a better. I thought he, he was the best horse coming out of the Dale win race. He had the brutal trip on the inside, got shuffled back to last, and uh, made a, a belated rally to come forth, but still only got beat a link despite having the worst of it. So I think Minstrel's time moving off the rail is a good thing. So uh, of the horses that are regularly running, I like Minstrel's time. Yeah. But these horses uh, <laughs> that have years off, it's tough. I went four, two, and six, and I thought a very difficult handicapping affair. I got the same top two. Uh, I mean, they're, they're the class of the race. Yeah, they are. It's but there are question dangerous. marks, as dangerous. you mentioned. Yeah, absolutely, with Where's Henry and three-point play. And the third spot, I, I put Eustonia. Uh, unlucky to lose to Dillwyn last time, just got beat a half a length. Uh, Mel Snow and uh, Antonio Reyes are always pretty dangerous together, so uh, he's a handy little horse that has nice tactical speed. Uh, Where's Henry's going to be on the lead, you know, Maybe you can lay just off him if where's where Henry falters a little bit, he could get into the mix. But uh, I agree, the two class horses in here are definitely where's Henry three point play. I got four, two, and three in the third. Out of the fourth, two year olds going three and a half for uh, maiden allowance. And I've gone to the outside, the Troy Taylor horse, three way trade. Uh, son of Grand Slam, they paid 55000 for it, Keeneland. Um, so he's they obviously thought a lot when they bought him. Uh, his works look good. Uh, Troy Taylor's two-year-olds are always ready to go. I like the draw, the nine hole mm -hmm. in these uh, three spot. and a half races. Really nice to uh, be able to break out there on your own. And, uh, you, know, you, you know, if you break a step slow, you're not going to get buried. So uh, I really like the post on three-way trade. The second spot I put Indian War Cry. Uh, another one that comes, another one they paid quite a bit of money for. They paid about 40000 mm -hmm. for this horse at the BC sale um, out of Boundless Colony. Uh, Greg Tracy's two-year-olds always look good. Richard Hamill accept, accepts the call. That's another positive in his corner. And in the third spot, I put D.S. Siobhan out of the uh, Tracy McCarthy barn, another barn that does very well with young horses, does very well with all her horses. Uh, her horses are always ready to go. I like the work tab. Uh, the breeding looks decent. The number is very good for the distance. I got nine, four, and eight. I've gone to the eight horse DS Saban. Uh, I thought that was you know nice. It's a filly against the boys, but three yeah. and a half furlongs is not as big a deal. But uh, I like the work tab. Uh, the mare was a pretty nice mare. Harold Barabee trained her answer with victory, yeah. and uh, the Stefan Otis's have done extremely well. Uh, I was looking for a debuter in here that could you know could show something, and I, that's the one I landed on. This outfit does well with the young horses also. Put the six horse Habita in for second. Uh, this horse was four wide the whole race. Uh, Chasing some maiden 30 granders is obviously tougher coming up for maiden allowance, but still the horse has a race under her belt and uh, showed quite a bit that day. And if this horse breaks a little bit better, it uh, could be quite dangerous. And I put the nine three-way trade in for third. Works are all right. Uh, as you mentioned, excellent connections. Uh, paid about a bunch of money for him. And, uh, you know, I would be shocked to see the horse win. He's probably going to be six to five or eight and five, but it's just the horse I, I, I'm going to play against. Uh, I went eight, six, and nine, and uh, there's a lot of chances. You mentioned uh, Indian War Cry. Uh, Nicole paid a lot of money for a uh, full brother to Boundless Cat. Craig uh, Trace has a very good eye for young horses, yeah. too. No, and, no, he's, yeah. and he's good at getting him ready. He's yeah. a good, good two year old, excellent two year old trainer, and uh, wouldn't be shocked to see this horse win either. So, uh, you know, give, it, give that one a look. But Get I went down to the paddock and have, have a look at Have a peek at those yeah. Dalmern things. Yeah. Make an effort because yeah, uh, it will tell you uh, a lot watching them in the paddock. Eight, six, and nine for me in the uh, fourth race. On to the fifth. That's a four thousand dollar fillies and mares going uh, six and a half furlongs, and I ended up on the six Delta Bouquet. My old friend Delta yep. Bouquet uh, picked her twice this year. She's been scratched both times, and uh, I'm hoping uh, that things are whatever was ailing her is uh, not ailing her anymore. And uh, she's come back with a series of minute and change works. She is a better horse than a four thousand dollar horse, and yep. if she decides to run a little bit, she will win. 
and I think she is your horse. I put the four-horse Diana's Legacy, who's the solid horse, I think, on the class drop and running for 7,500. Uh, she's, she's dangerous getting away from a horse like Hidden Harbor who went down there at 16 yeah. and one last and, time. And so, El Ciervo, yeah. Yeah, it's hooking at a dirty, tough horse and, and, and running against some tough paces. So this horse on the class drop is the logical horse, but I, I had landed on, on the six Delta Bouquet. I put the seven horse, Undo It. It seems to be coming around a little bit in for third. I went six, four, and seven. I see a bit of pace in here. I see Maida Vale going. I see Delta Bouquet going. I see Undo It going. So I'm hoping it sets up for a sea eye to eye. Uh, she ran a good race last time to get beat by Hillingdon. Um, that Elaine race looks like he kind of had a choice made. He could have went inside and he didn't. And I think maybe that cost her a length or two. Um, so I landed on CII. I, I put Delta Bouquet for the reasons you mentioned. Uh, classy old girl. I have her in the second spot. And in the third spot, I put Maida Vale at the Jim Brown Barn. I don't know how, you know, she led the whole way uh, like going short, long yeah. last time. I, yeah, I like the route to, to short uh, angle there. Uh, the Jim Brown Barn going well, especially with Robert Skelly, who pulled in a 19 to 1 shot last Friday night. Boy, Robert. Uh, I got 5, 6, and 3 in the fifth. On to the sixth race. Maidens. Maiden 30,000 for three year olds and up. I landed on the one Captain Salt. Uh, had been out uh, quite a while last time. He hadn't run in uh, a year. And, and Ran quite a good race uh, for, you know, being off that long. I think he got a lot out of that, finishing behind some, uh, very fast Milky Mean Joey and Legal Bandit, uh, who came back and just missed in uh, a, a, lo a long race of the day, long uh, made in 30. Uh, so I got Captain Salt on top. In the second spot I put, uh, whose daddy is that? He had a, he's had some troubled trips. The last one, he had a really rough trip in that Hope Seeker race. Uh, he also got banged up quite a bit. He, he was uh, bleeding a little bit coming out of the race. Uh, he nicked his uh, mm -hmm. knee a little bit, so it wasn't an ideal race for him, and he still only got beat five lengths in a race where Hope Seeker won by three and a half. So I don't mind whose daddy is that. The 10 hole isn't ideal, though. I'm not crazy about that. And in the third spot, I put uh, Stone Ridge Storm, a horse who figures in here. He's going to be one of the top picks. He just got ran uh, third in that uh, Hope Seeker race, that maiden special weight. Now he drops in for maiden 30 tag out of the Craig McPherson barn. He'll be dangerous. I got one, 10, and two. Yeah, I. I was torn between the two and the one. Uh, I picked Captain Salt last time. It, you know, the horse ran fine, but uh, I thought Storm Ridge Storm ran very well. The two horse uh, in a maiden special weight race and uh, was battling all the way to the wire. I don't see any speed in here. Stone Ridge Storm has to get the lead and, yeah. and, and, and set a more sensible pace. And uh, I, this horse is dangerous. I, I got Stone Ridge Storm to win it up at Captain Salt, who, who is definitely going to improve off the yeah. year layoff. I don't think he's a bounce candidate. He wasn't asked for a ton of stuff in his in his debut run uh, off the layoff, as I mentioned. But uh, still, here's a horse that can move forward. There's more there. I agree. I don't mind that horse at all. And I put the four horse, what goes around in for third, dropping out of that Hope Seeker race. Gets blinkers, though. I think that'll be the key. We're going to hope that, you know, this horse is, was, was, was liked enough by Richard Hamill to keep riding him back. And... Uh, you know, ran just another even race. Perhaps the, the equipment change was needed. He gets blinkers, and any young horses, when you see blinker changes, you must pay attention, because you will get drastic changes in their past performance. And so hopefully this is a positive one for the four horse, what goes around. So I, I went two, one, and four. I, I just think the two horses, Stone Ridge Storm speed, is too much to ignore, and uh, this horse is going to get an easy lead, I think. On to the seventh race, some non-two uh, fillies and mares, final race of the day. Uh, going to go a mile, and actually Colts and Gelding is going to go a mile and the 16th. And uh, I'm going to go to the sixth, double minor, big class drop for Melanie Walters. He's, you see this quite a bit out of her conditioned horses. They get a bit of a shot for 17.5 or non two allowance, yeah. and then they go right to four. Yeah. And it's starting to move on and win a race. And, and quite I, dangerous when they do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give double minor a big chance. I think this horse can rate and, and get the job done. But the one horse, Jack Road, I picked him last time. He got nailed by Mr. Majestic. But uh, I wasn't crazy about the race that he ran, but he ran... Good enough to like him in here. Yeah. And I put the three horse, Western Who, who could take advantage of a very, what could be a fast pace with Jackman Road in here, Pirate Chest, Black Whiskey, Black whiskey yeah. and Double Minor. So the pace scenario could be quite lively. And Western Who, I know he's got a lot, of, had a lot of chances, but uh, this horse ran a good third to Mr. Majestic and Jackman Road last time against average fractions, showing, showing he's only like, I don't know, 15 feet behind those two horses. And if Mr. Majestic was in here, he'd be you know, one of your favorites. Yeah. So this horse might get overlooked and Antonio Reyes is back aboard for Matarachi. So I, I went 6.3. I see it the same way, uh, what you've mentioned, the Melanie Walters horse, double minor I have on top. 
Jack Monroe yeah. just got beat a nose last time. I got those two, uh, one, two, as you do as well. In the third spot, I put Black Whiskey. Uh, horse has been improving. Ran a nice race last time for Maiden 5 out of the Bill Funny Connick thing. barn. Yeah, just galloped away from him. So uh, this is a logical step for him. Uh, if he keeps improving, he could definitely be in the mix here. But he is going to be part of the pace scenario, as you mentioned. But I got 6, 1, and 4 in the 7th on Saturday. And that'll do it for our analysis of the Saturday card. Up next will be our selections. You'll see Mike's come up first. There you are. Back in race number one, I landed on the five. I'm famous over the two and three. In race number two, I went to the four. Country Kid, four, two, and three. Well, for a bit of an upset there. In the third race, number four, Where's Henry? No upset there. That'll be a odds-on favorite. We'll see if he can get the job done. Four, two, and six. Number in the fourth race, I went to the eight. DJ, DS, Soban. Uh, over the six and nine. Eight, six, and nine. And a tough two-year-old race in the fourth. In the fifth race, went to the six, Delta Bouquet. Six, four, and seven. Race number six. Number two, Stone Ridge Storm. Hopefully the speed will go all the way. Two, one, and four. And the seventh race, I went to the six, a double minor. It was good to go with the hockey names when you're getting there in the Stanley That's Cup right. finals. Uh, six, one, and three. And on to my selections. There we go. In the first race, I would agree with Mike on the five. I'm famous over the four and the seven. In the second, I went to the six, raising memo over the seven and the two. In the third, I agree with Mike on the heavily favored Where's Henry, number four of the two and the three. In the fourth, I went to the nine, three-way trade over the four and the eight. In the fifth, I went to the five, C eye to eye over the six and the three. In the sixth, I went to number one, Captain Salt over the ten and the two. And the nightcap, I agree with Mike on number six, double minor over the one and the four. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in to Handicapper's Corner for our Saturday, June 22nd edition. Uh, hopefully, it will give me a little bit of insight and uh, hopefully the weather stays good. Yeah. Uh, it's not supposed to be great this weekend, but Saturdays, as you mentioned off the top, it's supposed to be the best day. Yeah, hopefully. So, fingers crossed we can get a little sunshine and enjoy a good uh, yeah. Saturday card. Yeah. Well, once again, thanks for tuning in here to Handicapper's Corner, and we'll see you next time. Enjoy the day, and don't forget, racing tomorrow, Sunday, first race at 8, 1, 150 with 8 on tap. I can get Valentine, cause on the morning line, the guy's got him bigger than five to nine. But make it up.